Hey everybody, today we're going to work on questions 8 through 11 on your topic 15 practice test. I wanted to show you an example of the notes that you could submit to me for your written work. What you not particularly want to see is just random answers circled on the multiple choice questions with no justification or no notes. So this is just a screenshot I took from Schoology, and this is one of your classmates' written notes. As I was explaining the concept, she was writing down and copying important vocabulary words and pictures. So you can see she has pictures of shapes, she has important ideas that I was mentioning, and this is just a great way for me to see that she was watching the video and paying attention as I taught each question. So I wanted to show this to you as an example of something that I would love to see for your written work. What I do... Okay, let's go ahead and work on question eight. This says that the top and bottom of the figure are parallel. So we don't have to figure that out. They just tell us that that's the case. We can mark these two parallel line segments with these arrows. Amber says that the figure is a rhombus and Lauren says it's a trapezoid. Who is correct? Explain how you know. This kind of question requires you to write a sentence. Okay, so in order to answer the question, let's review the definition of both a trapezoid and a rhombus. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral, meaning a polygon with four straight sides. And a trapezoid, in order to meet the definition, it has to have exactly one pair of parallel sides. Okay, let's contrast that with the definition of a rhombus. A rhombus is a parallelogram. with opposite acute angles and opposite equal obtuse angles. So that would look something like this. In this figure, we can mark opposite equal acute angles. So here's two acute angles that are equal and opposite equal obtuse angles. Here they are. In addition, we can mark opposite parallel lines. So based on these two definitions, we can see that this figure in question number eight is a trapezoid, not a rhombus. So your job is to write a sentence that explains that using the math vocabulary that I presented below. For question nine, we're asked to compare and contrast an isosceles triangle and an acute triangle. Remember that when we compare and contrast, we name the differences and similarities between two items. Okay, so in order to do this, let's review the definition of an isosceles triangle. Remember that when I'm writing, you should be writing also. So you should copy down this definition. An isosceles triangle is one with two equal sides and a third side of a different length. So let's draw that. Okay, my picture is not perfect. Luckily, we have mathematical symbols that we can use to show that two sides are of an equal length. You can use these cross hatching marks to show that. Leave the third side unmarked to show that that's a different length. In an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite the equal sides are also equal. So looking at our example, this side has an opposite angle that we can show here. This side that I'm highlighting in blue has an opposite angle here. These two angles that I just marked are equal to each other. Now let's consider the definition for an acute triangle.
An acute triangle is any triangle in which all three angles are less than 90 degrees. So as long as the angles are all less than 90 degrees, an acute triangle can be an equilateral, meaning all three sides are equal. It can be an isosceles triangle with three acute angles and two sides that are equal and a third unequal side. Or it could be a scalene triangle with three sides that are unequal as long as three of those angles are all acute. So an acute triangle does not refer at all to the length of the sides, but only to the size of the angles. So here on this equilateral, equilateral triangle, I can show that all three sides are equal by cross-hatching all three sides. On the isosceles triangle, I can show that two of the sides are equal by cross-hatching only two of the sides. And on a scalene triangle, if I draw a diagram of that, I'm not going to include any cross-hatching, and that will indicate that we have three unequal sides. So this one is the scalene triangle. Now your job is to write a sentence naming the similarities and the differences between an isosceles and an acute triangle. Okay, so this question asks us to name which quadrilaterals have four right angles. Remember that a quadrilateral is any polygon that has four straight sides. You can remember this because the root word quad means four. Now quadrilaterals can be classified by their angles or pairs of sides. In this case, we're being asked to classify specific kinds of quadrilaterals that have four right angles. Okay, here's another way to think about this. I can draw a parallelogram in the quadrilateral category because a parallelogram is a type of quadrilateral. In addition, I can draw a trapezoid in the quadrilateral category because a trapezoid is a type of quadrilateral. It has just one pair of parallel sides. A rectangle is a type of quadrilateral that has four right angles So all rectangles are quadrilaterals, but all quadrilaterals are not rectangles because we can see that my trapezoid and my rhombus are not rectangles. Similarly, I can also draw a square in this space and say that all squares are quadrilaterals that have four right angles but all quadrilaterals are not squares. It's kind of a tongue twister. Shapes like squares and rectangles are known as a special case of quadrilaterals, meaning squares and rectangles are both examples of quadrilaterals that have specific rules they must follow. In the next question, we're going to look at another example of a special case. Question 11 asks us to compare and contrast a square and a parallelogram. Which is the special case of the other? Okay, so one way to think about this is to ask yourself, which of these shapes has attributes that are not shared by the other shape? So 
we know that a parallelogram must have opposite sides that are parallel. Remember that the term parallel refers to line segments or lines that are the same distance apart and never ever cross, like railroad tracks. Here's a question to consider. Can a parallelogram have more than four sides? So I can draw a parallelogram that has four, six, or eight sides. As long as opposite sides are parallel, it's still considered a parallelogram. On the other hand, a square must have exactly four equal sides. That means that a square has attributes not shared by all parallelograms. So a square is a special case of a type of parallelogram. Okay, that's all for today. Let me know if you have any questions.